A simple misconfiguration can allow attackers to compromise our system. There is no need for a vulnerability or an exploit. This is called living off the land. In this video, I will show you different living off the land techniques using various resources. Living off the land is a technique where attackers use the built-in tools, softwares, or applications inside the system for their malicious operations. With this technique, they no longer need to install their own programs, which can alert the defenders. They can blend in with legitimate users or processes using the same set of tools. For example, a popular tool for searching files in Linux is the find command. If the compromise account has sudo access to find, it will be a direct path to root by just using a specific flag to get a shell. As you see here, without exploiting a vulnerability, an attacker can easily escalate to root by abusing the misconfiguration. GTFO bins is a popular curated list of techniques for various Linux binaries. This is where you will see the different methods, flags, program parameters, or steps in order to achieve something malicious using various Linux utilities. Living off the land is not only about privilege escalation. It can be anything that will benefit the attacker. Another use case will be to bypass restricted shells. For example, we have here a user who is inside our bash environment. He cannot go to different parts of the file system due to the restriction imposed. An attacker can use the built-in utilities to drop to a regular shell. After bypassing the restriction, attacker can now freely move within the file system. Over the years, there has been a lot of live off the land techniques that was discovered. It is no longer limited to Linux binaries. It expanded to other types of systems as well. For example, there is a Windows version of GTFO bins. This contains the different Windows binaries and scripts that can be leveraged by attackers for their operation. Let's say an attacker is looking for common apps that are normally installed in enterprise environments. This will show you the interesting information such as the type of binary and the path where it is located. And we see here the different techniques. The first one is to drop a JavaScript code inside the application directory before launching Teams. Once a user opens Teams, the JavaScript code will be executed. An alternative to that is to specify a command within the GPU launcher parameter during startup. Aside from Linux and Windows, there is also a curated list for Mac OS. This is called Living Off the Orchard, which follows the same concept. Inside the main page, we can see different categories. Let's see what is inside credential access. Then let's go to OSA script since this is a common automation tool in Mac devices. This binary allows you to run Apple script for automating various tasks. First use case will be to hijack the user clipboard since that typically contains sensitive data such as passwords. As you see here, the clipboard data can be easily retrieved by just using this return statement. So OSA scripting is really a powerful tool in Mac devices. This is similar to Bash in Linux and PowerShell in Windows. There is also another way of hijacking sensitive data which is to prompt users to enter their keychain credential. Tacker can disguise a malicious software update which will execute this command in the background. This page also provided ways on how to detect the malicious activities related to this binary. Aside from living off the operating system's binaries and tools, attackers can also abuse network connections to perform malicious actions. Living off the tunnels is a curated list that shows how attackers can leverage network tooling like proxies and tunnels. Let's look at something most of us is familiar with, which is Cloudflare Tunnel. This tunnel allows us to expose resources to the internet without having a public routable IP address because it leverages the Cloudflare global network. In this example technique, an attacker can leverage it to host phishing sites or hosting malicious binaries or payloads, which can be part of an attack chain. Cloudflare is a very good hiding spot for attackers because it hides behind the Cloudflare domains. From operating systems to networks, let's go now to hardware. Living off the hardware is a collection of information on how different devices can be used by attackers. Let's pick one of the most common, which is the Hack 5 rubber ducky. The purpose of this USB device is to inject malicious keystrokes to the target system. As we see, this just looks like a standard thumb drive, but it is entirely different inside. It was designed to execute complex and covert attacks to the target system, such as executing payloads in fraction of a second. We also see here the different hardware information that can help us detect this and any traces in our system. The next one is interesting. This is called living off false positives. False positives are events that are known to be harmless, so they are excluded from the monitoring configuration to reduce too much noise. So attackers can use this event to blend in to avoid detection. I think this can make the life of defenders a bit harder because aside from dealing with the amount of noise, they also need to precisely tweak their configurations to detect the malicious actors trying to blend in. Let's look at one common example, which is when a Windows application crashed. Wurfault is an error reporting process in Windows. When an application crashes, Wurfault will produce a child process, which is a snapshot of the failing application. 
Based from the description, a suspicious were fault child process was detected. That means an application crashed and the Windows were fault program was triggered with the following command line arguments. Monitoring tools will typically ignore this event since were fault is a legitimate process in Windows. In order for attacker to abuse this event by hiding behind it, they will first need to update the registry values to force an application to trigger a silent exit mechanism and to point to their payload. After the registry update is done, attacker can either wait for the application to run or crash it intentionally. Once the application crashed, where fault will be triggered with the following command line flags blending within the false positive events. After that is successfully launched, the attacker's payload will be triggered. The next technique is something I'm really familiar with since I'm a DevOps engineer. This is living off the pipeline. I think this is one of the most dangerous places an attacker can hide and inject malicious payloads since they can lead to a more devastating supply chain attack. Let's have a look at GitHub Actions since this is one of the most popular CI-CD pipelines out there. Like any other pipeline framework, GitHub Actions uses a workflow file to define the series of steps on what to do for each stage of the pipeline. This is a very powerful configuration since it allows direct access to the underlying runner operating system. An attacker can inject malicious commands at any given step to deliver his payload. Another popular tool that an attacker can leverage are Docker containers. Containers are common in CI CD pipelines since they allow developers to deliver applications faster. Or it can also be used as a way to run other tools rather than installing the tools manually, which consumes time and slows down the pipeline. If an attacker get hold of a Docker file, he can inject commands to steal a private source code. He can also just point the image to his own repository so that anyone who pulls it will be compromised. The next one is something all of us must be aware of. This is living off the land applications. Attackers can abuse the commonly installed third-party applications for their malicious gains. For example, bad actors can drop malicious plugins inside the application directory of Notepad++, or they can abuse Discord to host malware or use as a C2 channel. There are also other notable techniques such as living off the land drivers. This is a collection of known vulnerable drivers that were used by attackers, so be careful if you want to play around with them. Attackers can also live within the hypervisor space, or in active directory environments, and so much more. I believe there are more living off the land techniques out there. The examples we saw from this video are just some of the most common ones. Feel free to share in the comments if you know other techniques. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.